We open in the garden of the Prince of Hesse Castle Garden. This is where Gerard fell in love with the botanicals. We'll get more into the details as we go along. These different images are of spectacular gardens with mazes of mazes of flowers that inspired Gerard to begin to paint botanicals, which in turn inspired Pierre to paint his botanicals. Growing up in a place like this seems unimaginable. With the blue skies and the fountains, I can see how it had inspired both of them to paint watercolors. Um, hi, my name is Bella Goodwin, and we're going to be talking about um, topic three with uh, Gerard von Spandach. He was a Dutch painter who used oil and watercolor painting for his artwork. He was born on March 22nd, 1746 in Tilburg, Netherlands. His artistic influence was his older brother, uh, Cardinal Van Spandach, who was also a skillful painter in the 17th century. In the year 1760, Gennard learned painting techniques with a decorative painter named William Jacob Perrion in Antwerp, Antwerp in a French style garden that belonged to uh, Prince of, Prince of Hazy Kessel. Grenard found his calling for painting beautiful flowers. Um, as time went on, Grenard traveled to Paris in 1769 and in 1774, he, his passion for painting had paid off because he, he was appointed as a miniature painter in Miniature painting uh, means that in the 16th and 18th century, it was described as a small, finely uh, wrote, I think, portrait executed on vellum, prepared, prepared card, copper, or ivory. Uh, the name is derived from the minimum or red lead used by the medieval um, illuminators. In 1780, Van Spandach replaced Madeline Francesco's passport as a professor at Jardin des Plantes. Madeline was a talented French uh, portrait painter in the year 1740. She also served as a royal painter for the king's garden and cabinet. Shortly after being named as a professor, um, Gennard was elected as elected to be a member of the Academy de Boots Arts. One of the other members to be elected was Perry Joseph Redichu. Perry Joseph's artwork was profoundly influenced by the work of Gennard Van Frundock when he had him as a teacher at the Jardin des Plantes. They became friends and Van Spandock taught him about all the technical aspects of both engraving and watercoloring techniques. Redditu's credits credit his success to all that he learned as he worked with Van Spandock. Watercolors are very important to Pierre and Gerard's works. They also have many benefits that a lot of people don't know about, and one of them is they protect natural fiber substrate from oil penetration, um, which kind of just it makes the, it keeps the oil from soaking into the canvas and the way the pictures last longer and the lines are more clear. Um, when you allow the acrylic layers to dry fully before painting on top with oils, then the they will 
last longer underneath the oils will provide a bit of a shine and more unified texture throughout the whole thing um, staying away from sharp peaks and textures allows for a allows for the allows for the work to be unified throughout the whole thing. Um, the more layers increases the stiffness. These are all very with all of the different with all of the different techniques and all of the with all of the different techniques. Why is that not recording? Why is that not recording? Learning about the technique, we are given these beautiful and realistic things that just inspire us as we walk through life. I'm Jordan, and I'm going to be talking um, about these two works of art that you can see on the screen right now that were donated to the Bernal Galleries. Um, this first one is by Joseph Carson, who used uh, Pierre's Plate 28. Um, it's a hand-colored engraving, and you can actually find it on Bernal's campus in the Science Building, as well as this one on the right that is unknown using Pierre's a plate 108. It's also a hand colored engraving. As you can see in these two works of art, he followed in the footsteps of his friend and mentor with the realistic botanical feels. Um, he did take his own liberties with having the plain backgrounds, unlike many of Spandalk. Van Spandalk. Yeah. Um, Vaspendonk's works. Um, as you can see here, the colors are um, watercolors um, because, I mean, I can see that, but I've studied art before. So, um, also, as well as these works just being beautiful and donated to Bernal, um, when they were donated, it created a bridge between the arts departments and the science departments to come together and really do some great work regarding these art works. Of this work is a Pierre work that you can find in the Bernal collection. As we keep going, you're going to see a work by Gerard. Um, and as you can see, the little similarities, um, the big similarity being the botanical theme. Um, the next picture is another by Pierre. We're going to alternate. I would like to talk about the little differences that you can see. So one of the few things that I see in the Gerard is the backgrounds have more detail and they have more shadows and they're very very realistic um gerard also likes to add the vases and tables unlike pierre where he just has plants standing by itself in a very realistic form but with nothing else if there are shadows very little so he works specifically with botanicals where as you can see gerard works with um, other realistic things and animals. As you can see, there's a bird in the previous image. These things are important to anybody looking into their artworks.